Weather is fine. You are number one for approach. You wish to take over manually. Disconnect the autopilot by pressing the take over push button on the side stick. When the autopilot is turned off using the takeover push button, the following warnings occur. A cavalry charge RO warning for about one second, the master warning flashing for three seconds, an autopilot off red message on the EWD for nine seconds. If the takeover button is pushed again, these warnings will be canceled immediately. Notice, on the FCU, the Autopilot 1 light is extinguished. On the FMA, Autopilot 1 light is also extinguished. On the ECAM, all warnings are extinguished. We decide to fly this ILS with the flight directors off using raw data only. The captain turns his flight director off first. Deselect flight director number one. On PFD-1, the flight director crossbars are removed. On both FMAs, flight director two indicates that only FD-2 is on and that all flight director indications on both PFDs are resulting from FD number two. Now the first officer will switch off his flight director. Deselect flight director number two. On PFD number two, the crossbars are removed. On both FMAs, flight director engagement and all autopilot flight director mode indications are removed. Note the auto throttle FMA. If the autopilot is off and subsequently both flight directors are turned off, the auto thrust will automatically revert to the speed mode. If the flight directors are to be turned off, it is United Airlines policy to turn both off at the same time. Otherwise, the possibility exists for spurious warnings, such as wind shear, to activate. The autothrottle system is still engaged with the thrust levers in the climb detent. If you wish to use the throttles in the manual mode, press the instinctive disconnect push button on the thrust levers. Auto thrust is now disconnected. Unfortunately, the levers are still in the climb detent, so thrust begins increasing to climb thrust. As a consequence, the aircraft accelerates. This, in most cases, is quite undesirable. In approach, for example, this will likely cause a go-around. We will see now the proper autothrottle disconnect technique. The standard autothrottle disconnect technique is, first, retard the thrust levers so that the predicted EPR circle matches the actual EPR indication needle. Throttle lever angle, TLA, now matches the actual EPR, and the auto throttle can be disconnected without risk of thrust surge. The second action is to press the instinctive disconnect push button on the thrust levers. When the auto throttles are turned off, the following cautions occur. Single chime, master caution, auto throttle off, amber message. Because actual and commanded EPR are set to near identical values, there is no thrust change. If the instinctive disconnect push button is pressed again, these cautions will be canceled immediately. Note the flashing message, lever climb, in the FMA. Whenever the auto throttles are engaged and the thrust levers are not in the climb detent, this message flashes. 
If after five seconds the situation is not corrected, an intermittent chime, a master caution, and an ECAM message are displayed. If the thrust levers are inadvertently retarded or retarded too slowly, the following cautions recur every five seconds. Single chime, master caution, auto flight, auto thrust limited, amber message for the auto throttle FMA. These cautions occur because the thrust lever position, TLA, is limiting the maximum thrust for the auto throttle. The cautions may be canceled by 1. Disconnecting the autothrottle system or 2. Placing the thrust levers back into the climb detent.